in Baltimore. Justin Cutcher, Coy Wire, DJ Shockley, Jen Hale with you for Falcons preseason game number two. Emory Jones in at quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens. John Kelly, the tailback, second and 12. Jones, Get it. bam, to Kelly, and Kelly gets hit hard. You know who it is. It has to. You know who it is. Natron Brooks, again, that's his ninth tackle. Great disguise there. He knows he has the flat. He makes it play off like he's playing quarters there. And watch him just doesn't even backpedal. Bam! Out of the secondary, delivering the big hit. Make the crowd go, ooh. The fact that there's no hesitation is so rewarding if you're a defensive coach. Like this guy understands what he sees, and then, like you say, can fire and make the play. Atron Books is having a, a big time ball game. Third and 11. Jones, a little jump throw. The catch is made by John Kelly, but he gets tackled short of the first down marker. Donovan Newton with the tackle. Holding that fourth down hand up. That's the best feeling as a defender right there. You had a couple good stops. You know it's fourth down. Bring out the punt team. Get off the field. Excellent set of plays there for that defense. I give that defense a lot, a lot of credit, too. He started to move and watch guys retrace steps and, you know, Force that football out of his hand. Really good series. Dylan Drummond back to receive this punt. Fair catch signals and made. The story right now in this game, guys, is the play of Natron Brooks, number 35. And he's done it in multiple ways. And you're talking about fight through blocks. He's smiling over there. Impact right plays. Now. One of those was a tackle for loss that we saw there in that highlight. He's he got great uh, short area quickness. This is a guy who played corner in college, but he has that ability to even play safety or in the slot if you need, need him to. Plays very physical despite only being 5'11", about a buck 80. He plays big. Jace McClellan there on the carry on first down, got three yards. I mean, that's about, that's about your size, ain't it? Kutch? You know I mean? How tall? Yeah, 5'11", that's you, right? I wish <laughs> when he was on the box and <laughs> when he was standing on the box in the pregame show. He's My dad always <laughs> told me I would be. I never made it there. <laughs> on second down, kept by Paddock. Well, they're getting back to the run game, not like we were expecting them to with a quarterback run, but effective nonetheless. Clearly, they want to see uh, what. Paddock can do. They're uh, allowing him to throw the ball over the park. And look at Brooks over there getting some well deserved love from the that's, teammates. That's his guy, D. Alford, right there. Yeah. Uh, a guy who plays a lot in that slot, but just give him a lot of love. And he needs to know when you got to come make a lot of tackles to play. Talk about the trust and, and the excitement the, the staff has in Brooks. They have him back returning kicks, they have him all over the field. Third consecutive run play. And look at this, breaking some tackles is McClellan, and he's trying to show what he can do. Yeah, this was a big conversation last week about these two running backs and Carlos Washington Jr. and then Jace McClellan. Watch the ability to just break through some tackles here. Good double team up front. Look at them moving guys. That's what you like to see up front. You got 61 up front, Zach Bailey moving guys. And then you see the physical nature that Jace McClellan brings. Defensive lineman just bounces off of him. Look at a stiff arm. A tough physical runner from Alabama. That was Deirdre Sanat, who used to play for the Falcons, that he ran right through a 330 pounder as if he was just a turnstile. It was a 19 yard run, so they keep it on the ground. And this time, nowhere to go. CJ Ravnell with the tackle. Powerful runner, McClellan. He's you know, built like a little bowling ball. At Bama, he averaged about nearly six yards per carry. And he's the type of guy that will break a tackle or two any given run, get you some of those hard earned yards. He's got a ran for 6,400 yards in high school. Jesse Matthews takes a little screen. Number 86, Jesse Matthews scoots up the field. And they've been a lot better on this drive on third down, getting it a little bit closer. The last one was a third and one. He got another third and one or two on this possession. Before this possession, they were two for ten on third down. Being a little bit better here on first and second down has definitely helped this third down execution. Is it a run for McClellan? Lyman, they're light on their hands, but it's a draw. 
is a run. And that should be enough for the first down. They're going to move the chains. And yes, we do have chains this week. <laughs> Morris there you see him was really adamant about trying to get the run game going today and last week didn't get a good feel of it he was really happy with how they did it in the first half and we've seen spurts of it here in the second half get going and they just passed the 100 yard mark too, but up to 106 yards rushing in the game and now a big pass over the middle Josh Ali with the catch they're liking that deep dig against this defense They've had success with it several times in this game, and it comes off again. That stretch run play action, pulling it down and putting it right underneath that safety who was eyeing it up. And what a way by Ali to break it off, come flat downhill, get that ball. A 30-yard completion, first and 10 at the 33 of Baltimore. Pass the tight end, Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick will get a couple. We'll stay up to date with your Atlanta Falcons. Opt in to SMS to be the first to know about exclusive offers, team news, game day updates, and more. Message frequency may vary. Message and data rates may apply. But guys, I mean, that big play was set up by the successful run. Yeah, absolutely. And if you look at the big picture of this game, we've really only seen about five plays from this offense. Very true. And it's very vanilla. It's easy for the coaches to evaluate, have the players do the same sorts of plays who can execute. Paddock with a back shoulder throw intended for O.J. Hilaire. And, and, uh, and we're going to get a penalty here because the receiver at the bottom of the screen was moving. He was asking the, 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 the ref, is he on, is he off? They snapped the football. And these are the plays that you talk about that come back to haunt you later on. And you got to figure out if you're on the line of scrimmage or Illegal off. formation. Well, that's on the official. Offense. He the needs to get declined. his answer back quicker down. so he can get set. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> you better get set, though. Watch at the bottom of your screen here. You see him talking. That's the that's the back at the bottom of your screen right there, Spencer Brown. He's asking, he's talking, and before you know it, the ball snap, and now you got a a five yard penalty. It, it it is a point of emphasis though that the official should not be doing the job for you. It's true, and you have to know. Like you got to look down the line of scrimmage to know. Okay, if the middle guy's on, then I'm obviously off because I can't cover him up. And that was Spencer Brown, a running back who just came to the team this this week too. So a little bit on him. Here's Paddock. And we're going to have a flag come in as it was O.J. Hilaire again got tripped up. And Demarion Williams. Contact. Defense number 24. Five yard penalty automatic. First down. All right, so we keep the chains moving. Watch the blitz pick up here. Spencer Brown making up for his penalty on the previous play. You have the offensive line buying enough time. This is a long route, right, Shock? And oh, yeah. uh, you can see the defensive back. Got hold, called for a little bit of a tug there coming out of the break. At the five yards, you got to let him go. Okay, put your hands on him. So nice job of O.J. Hilaire really fighting through that def defender and getting that call. It's kept by Paddock. Paddock's got a blocker. The blocker was his tight end, Austin Stogner. Now obviously, this is more for Paddock because we know once uh, September comes around. <laughs> Kirk's not going to run the ball? They're not going to have Kirk Cousins coming around the corner with a with a lead blocker. That's for sure. Look at Raheem's like, where you get that one from? <laughs> <laughs> We've seen that play a couple times now. Clearly, <laughs> like something to do with Paddock out there uh, running out. Student body left. <laughs> their quarterback. Maybe they're setting something up. Second down and nine. Jace McClellan returns at tailback. Oh, that pass behind intended receiver intercepted. Bo Braid with the interception, and now did he just fumble it? Oh, they fumbled it back. Stogner is there. Oh, he's got it too. Great hustle by Stogner. Play is never over. Let's hear from Brad Allen. The ruling on the field of down by contact is under further review. Baltimore's 25, Paddock in the backfield all alone. 
Those backers come up the A gaps. This thing has to come out fast. We'll yeah. see. There they go. Drop it. Off the back foot, and that ball is incomplete. Jesse Matthews had to turn around multiple times, looking over different shoulders and could not haul it in. Almost a phenomenal catch. That's to be able to track that ball and flip his head around at the last second. Gave himself a chance, but just a bit wide. Yeah, he's running an inside fade from that slot position. So the ball theoretically should be over the other shoulder. So it's a great job of him trying to adjust to it. But Paddock did have some pressure in his face. They brought six guys. You can only block five. So the ball had to come out like you mentioned before. All right, now Koo on for a 44-yard attempt. He's been hugging That's that right. left side upright. And we've got a whistle before flag coming out. We'll practice. That's all, just practice. Snap infraction. Kicking team, number 49. Five-yard penalty. So now your 44-yard attempt becomes a 49-yard attempt. Well, that's because it was a snap infraction against number 49, Liam McCullough. And now, this is your your day one starting combination of McCullough and, you know, Bradley Pingen and Koo. So you expect them to be, you know, in rare form here. All right, let's see if he can straighten things out here. Same thing. Starting it at that upright, draws it, and it's no good. Now, three misses on the day for Young Way Koo. It's just preseason, he'll get it corrected. He's missed three kicks all in the same spot. Still 13 to 6, Ravens leading. Heavy doses of run, I would imagine, at this point in the game. The Ravens, they really put a high precedent on winning for backfield. He's living in the backfield all day. Flag comes flying in as John Kelly tried to get to the outside. He just better start running the nature. I mean, he's over there almost. Baltimore's 25, Paddock in the backfield all alone. Those backers come up the A gaps. This thing has to come out fast. We'll yeah. see. There they go. Drop it. Off the back foot, and that ball is incomplete. Jesse Matthews had to turn around multiple times, looking over different shoulders, and could not haul it in. Almost a phenomenal catch. That's to be able to track that ball and flip his head around at the last second. Gave himself a chance, but just a bit wide. Yeah, he's running an inside fade from that slot position. So the ball theoretically should be over the other shoulder. So it's a great job of him trying to adjust to it. But Paddock did have some pressure in his face. They brought six guys. You can only block five. So the ball had to come out like you mentioned before. All right, now Koo on for a 44-yard attempt. He's been hugging That's that right. left side upright. And we've got a whistle before flag coming out. Practice. That's all. Just practice. Snap infraction. Kicking team. Number 49. Five yard penalty. So now your 44 down. yard attempt becomes a 49 yard attempt. Well, that's because it was a snap infraction against number 49, Liam McCullough. And now this is your your day one starting combination of McCullough and you know Bradley Pingen and Koo. So you expect them to be you know in rare form here. All right, let's see if he can straighten things out here. Same thing, starting it at that upright, draws it, and it's no good. Now, three misses on the day for Young Way Koo. It's just preseason, he'll get it corrected. He's missed. Three kicks all in the same spot. Still 13 to 6, Ravens leading. Heavy doses of run, I would imagine, at this point in the game. The Ravens, they really put a high precedent on winning for backfield. He's living in the backfield all day. 
And that comes flying in as John Kelly tried to get to the outside. He just better start running the nature. He's over there almost out of chance. Offense, number 78, 10 yard penalty. First down. Well, let's talk about Natron Brooks as the holding penalty gets called against Baltimore. You guys, when we came out of break, we're talking about how Natron Brooks is now playing a different position. He's playing in the nickel. What does it mean for him in this game to be as good as he's been and now moving around that defensive secondary? It, it, it's tremendous versatility. I mean, when you can tell a coach, I can play inside, I can play outside, or for offensive line, I can play guard, I can play center, I can play tackle. It keeps from them having to add another player to the roster because you can play multiple spots. Collier with a screen. And Collier gets tackled after a pickup of 11. You have to feel really good about the depth in the defensive secondary. Of course, we have this addition with, that we're waiting on with the safety, Justin Simmons, but also you have A.J. Terrell, Mike Hughes, D. Alford, who we haven't even seen, right? Kevin King played outstanding football last week, coming back after two years out of the game. Clark Phillips, and then after that, I mean, Natron Brooks, you have to think that he has really catapulted himself with his performance today, both in pass coverage and tackling in the run game. Draw play here in the run game. Angelo Malone right there, number 51, coming up with that tackle. Doing a good job. He's playing outside, but retraces steps and comes down that line to make that play on the, the running back draw. He's another guy who's on that edge. And now when you bring in a guy like Matthew Judon, it makes it a little bit tougher for you to be able to make this ball club now and be a guy. So you got to find ways to be productive while you're playing to show the culture staff that I deserve some time. I deserve to be on this team, and I deserve to be developing. Third and nine. There he gets rid of it. Oh, it's popped oh, all out. I mean, it's it's unreal. It's unreal right now what Natron Brooks is doing right now. At some point, even though it's preseason, he's like, let's just throw the ball to the other side <laughs> of the field. Let's go away from 35 because he makes a play every time we send it his way, whether it's in the run game coming up, 11, 12 tackles on the day now, and here's another big hit on a big man. That's a, a big receiver. <laughs> yeah, that's a tight end, Kadir Hushmael. And he is not afraid. He sticks his hat on the ball. And that's what I'm saying, Cole. It's not like he's out here biting ankles. He's trying to trip guys up. That is a 250, 60-pound tight end coming out there, and he's putting his shoulder and hat right in the right place and knocks that football out. I mean, easily his best game. Stout kicking to Trey Vaval. Fair catch signaled, and he lets this one go into the end zone for a touchback. Well, guess what, guys? I think we have our open set for next week. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're talking about him. Here in the fourth quarter, Do the Falcons have a comeback drive in there. John Paddock under center, Spencer Brown in a tailback. On first down, it's a give to Brown, and Brown up the middle. Good yardage, and let's go down to Jen Hell, who's got another guest. Another special one, Mr. Caden Ellis joining us, Kutch. Thanks so much, Caden. You got to settle in this offseason, meet this new defensive staff. What has you most excited about this Jimmy Lake defense coming up this year? Um, you know, he's off, first off, it's like the people that you work with is what's most important. And so getting to be around him and raw and, and rude and the guys that I'm working with, as well as the rest of our staff, that's been awesome. Uh, so that's the first thing. But, you know, secondly, more football focused. Uh, it's really cool seeing just how willing they are um, to adapt things to the strengths of their players. You know what I'm saying? And so seeing coaches that are, you know, not only willing to, but smart enough to do that in a great way, uh, I'm really excited to get it on film. It's so important. You're so right. Uh, and speaking of adapting to players, the Falcons just added a huge piece to your squad, this defense, this Matthew Judon addition. How do you think that's going to change the defense? You know, I've been watching him for a long time, those bright red sleeves, and uh, I'm glad he doesn't have to change the color for those when he comes over here. So um, I'm really excited to play with him. He's been uh, such a great player in this league, and uh, to have someone that you know can get that quarterback, whether you're rushing him alone or you're rushing a couple other guys with him, uh, it's, it's a blessing to, to be able to play behind him. 
it's going to be scary fun to watch you guys all together out there. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be so much fun. Uh, one of your draft picks, J.D. Bertrand, uh, Captain America, as Raheem calls him, he's wearing the green dot today. You wore the green dot for the Falcons last year. How tough is that? How impressive is that, that this rookie is out here doing this, even if it is a preseason game? No, it's... It, you are the communication from the coach to the rest of the players. Without you doing your job uh, correctly, no one else in the field is going to know what to do. So um, him being able to take that on, like you said, even in a preseason game, and uh, being able to do that to such a high level and have it, you know, not affect his play, still go out there and rack up as many tackles he racked up in that first half, uh, it's a great testament to the player he is, and uh, I'm excited to have him here. Okay, and we got the two-minute warning. i got to let you go. Thank you so much for your time. I can talk to you all game. Good luck this season. Thank you so much. Have a good one. God bless. Catch. O.J. Hilaire on the catch, a pickup of 15, a two-minute warning. We have gotten to that point with 1.55 to go, and the Falcons trailing by seven. On the 48-yard line of the Falcons. Paddock, the end around to Jesse Matthews. And Matthews... Let's see where they mark him out. Very close to that first down marker. Nope, they're going to mark him back a few yards. Seven on the carry. Love the call. Quick hit and play. Get him on the edge. And you always talk about having that first play be the, a successful one when you're coming out for this two-minute drive, especially on first down. And a nice job of getting in the hands of a guy who's really speedy. Plenty of time. All three timeouts remaining. McClellan takes the handoff up the middle. McClellan makes a move and gets hit and upended. Bo Braid with a tackle, but a run of 15 by McClellan. Got to be really happy with the progress you see. That's all you want in the preseason, right? You want to see that the players aren't making the same mistakes. You're, you're improving on things that need to be improved on. This week it was the run game was the focus, and they're opening up big holes here all game long. Paddock. Incomplete, looking for Fitzpatrick. He was going through his progression. Now second and 10 as the clock stops. Zach Bailey, 61. Jovan Gwynn, 56 up front. And right guard and center combination on that last play that opened up a big old hole to run the football. And we've seen the last two plays being able to, to be really productive in that has helped this drive get started. Like I mentioned, minute 22 to go, still three timeouts. So much room to get better. A much better week on the ground for the Falcons. 145 yards rushing today. Paddock. Good pocket protection finds Matthews. And Jesse Matthews, number 86, has another first down. As the chains will be moved, he gets it up to the 13-yard line, picks up 13. Goes to his third read there for Paddock. I mean, that's... What more can you ask of a guy who just shows up, and throws, throw him out here into this preseason game? You got a get potential game-winning drive on the line. He's patient in the pocket. To your point, Justin, great protection up front. The offensive line has looked um, really stellar this week. Um, it's two weeks in a row now. Last week, good in pass pro, needed improvement on the run game. They're kind of putting it all together here on display against the Ravens. Really, when you think about last week to this week, the entire game has felt different. And that's what you want from week one to week two. Can guys take the next step and do it in a game? This unit, this team has done that. McClellan bounces it to the outside. And McClellan will get up to the 12. Bo Braid was there to bring him down, a pickup of three. That was a good, tough run. I mean, he, he you almost get the sense that he can smell the goal line. He doesn't want to wait. He, he wants to take it to the house now. He smells his opportunity to leave an impact on this game and on this team. As a, as a young draft pick, you want to have those highlight real moments. Paddock, oh, dangerous ball, and he finds his receiver. Jesse Matthews, there is a flag in the end zone. It's going to be holding against the Ravens. Yeah, get the ball on the one yard line. That's going to be that's going to be awesome. Working on Fitzpatrick in the end zone. Prior to the pass, holding defense number six. The penalty is declined as a result of the play is a first down. One big picture point here that just through two preseason games here this year, and you're going to see clear clear hold in the end zone here, a tackle all the way to the <laughs> ground. Uh, um, 
is last year at this point in preseason, we were doing a lot of head scratching and sloppy football. This team, it's, it's totally different. Technique-wise, execution-wise, that speaks volumes of the coaching. Even here in the preseason, it's showing up with these depth players playing good football. Handoff up the middle to the end zone, McClellan! How about meeting two guys at the one-yard line and splitting them with a tough physical run? Cole, you just mentioned a guy who could smell the end zone. That's what you're talking about. Short yardage, running the football, being physical. We talk about the offensive lineman, but how about your running back being physical? Watch this. Gonna have two guys meet him at the one-yard line and drag both of them in the end zone. Good, hard, tough, physical run from Jace McClellan. Nice job up front, too, creating that hole to run through. Roll tied to Fly Falcons. Running through two guys like a bowling ball through a wet paper bag on that. And now we're going to go for the win. For the win, baby. The best two-point play. Man coverage all across the board. Paddock to McClellan again, but this time he stops. Tavion Robinson with the stop. It's one thing to watch. We've seen his zone read action work for him through this game. And I wonder if he pulls the football, what happens here? You get zone read going across. They actually play the zone read good. And it's hard to see if Paddock pulls it. Does he have a chance to walk in the end zone? And I'm he, sure if they had a zone. Defender. After the play, Paddock yeah, kind of says, I wish I had that yeah. back. You'll see him yeah, snap his hands one -on -one. like, man, did I make the wrong decision there? Um, it would have been a. That, that, that's a tough call, play for a running back. I mean, that guy's basically tackling as he gets the ball. That was a clear read for the quarterback to to pull that one. Yeah, no doubt. Well, guys, no doubt. one of the, the rule changes this year with this new dynamic kickoff is if you want to have an onside kick, you have to announce that you're going to have the onside kick. So let's see right now if they decide to have that. If they do, it goes back to the previous to last year's onside kick rule. Doesn't matter. They're not going for it. <laughs> hey, it's a great I explanation. I just want to make though. sure I explained it. It okay? was re explained really well, Coach. <laughs> All that work for nothing. <laughs> Bradley Pinion will kick off. Gets it into the landing zone. And this is returned by Owen Wright. The ball with the tackle. But really with 31 seconds left in this game. Look at Judon making himself right at home for They're Falcons like, fans in Baltimore. They're all saying, what number are you going to wear? What number? I'll go buy the jersey. What number? 1-5 is the number that Matthew Judon will well as see, the number 15. So Falcons fans, get ready. 15 is coming to the bins. Mm. That will do it in this one. Baltimore will win it 13 to 12. But Falcons fans, unlike last week where it was sloppy, there's a lot of positives to take from this game. Yeah, and again, I'll say the point that I just made minutes ago, comparing to last preseason and where you are now, you're feeling so good about yourself and knowing all those stars and the elite playmakers you have.